The essence of Theatre 503 is to present diverse stories for the stage. Uh, we consider ourselves to be a writer's best first chance and that's become our strap line now. Um, and it seems like um, increasingly uh, the sector needs that theatre. 503 playwrights have a very strong track record in the industry. Uh, at the moment, Chris Arch, who was, um, came up through the 5035 mentoring scheme, uh, his production of Land of Our Fathers transferred to the West End, is touring around the country. Dennis Kelly was, uh, had his first show at Theatre 503, most famous now for Matilda the Musical. Bees production of And Then Come the Night Jars, which is now looking at a national tour later in the year. Um, so I think there's a, uh, there's a history of writers that the theatre has adopted going on to have great success. There's no objectivity about um, reading the play. It's, it's, it's all down to you, the reader, and your relationship with the, with the, with the play and, and what this writer, what, what the world that the writer has presented to you. I think when we open those scripts, what we're looking for initially is something that immediately grabs you. Uh, there's the dialogue to kind of fears and fly off the page, uh, maybe the beginnings of a, a what you think might be the thematic interests and concerns of the play that are dealing with a subject that he's talking to today and is of interest to us, uh, but ultimately just really engaging new work, new writing. Yeah, it gives you it's a massive vote of confidence or it's a massive boost of confidence because someone's actually going to say, yeah, okay, we're willing to sort of put this on. And it goes through a pretty from what I understand, it goes through a pretty rigorous reading um, panel here. It's a huge validation, you know, to have this play that people have sort of knocked around and been not interested in, and then to be talking to Dennis Kelly and him saying how much he loved it, you know, that it, it, for personally is a huge, huge deal. To have the production in itself is a beautiful thing, and, and to be able to put my work forward and to have uh, it move people, but it also just means people start to take you seriously, which is really nice. We are open to reading all scripts, we offer feedback, we meet with writers, and I like to think that even the slightest bit of communication between us and them is the thing that might just keep them going to the next play. I think the three things I kind of look for in any play, when I'm, when it, regardless of whether I'm going to read it or whether I'm going to see it, is you know, does it do three things to me? Does it surprise me? Does it move me? And do I learn something from it? There's only one bit of advice, which is kind of in two parts, that I read somewhere, which is really good advice, not from a playwright, but from another writer. And he said that the two things that you need to do are read a lot and write a lot. And I don't really think there's any way around that. I think don't, you know, try and write anything that you think people want. Just write something that is, you know, the thing that you would write if you had six months to live and it was your last chance to write something. Just put you in it and, and love it and then that should uh, be evident. Well, one writer, David Hare, said something um, once a couple of years ago. He said um, when he sits down to write a play, the first character he deals with is himself. And I never heard it being put like that before, and that really kind of stayed in my mind. I kind of thought, well, actually, yeah, that makes sense. What it's about is putting an offer out there, a completely accessible opportunity for anyone to send a play in and get it read, get it read twice, and potentially get it shortlisted. And the great thing about being shortlisted, we're in touch with the whole shortlist, 25 writers who are now on our radar, who potentially are the next generation of writers.